What's up, YouTubers? Rich here from 2RC Productions. And I haven't been in the studio here in a while to talk to you guys. I mean, I come down here a little bit. <clears throat> I do a little bit of tinkering here and there, but I haven't been doing too much. I've been doing uh, a lot with the car stuff. You guys know I saw the video. Uh, we picked up a 2001 Bullet Mustang, and I've been spending some time on that. And just kind of finishing up the yearly stuff, you know, through the summer and the stuff going on with the school, with the sports. And and um, the weather has been extremely strange. I live in the Midwest. I'm in Illinois. And it just got cold. And we're at November, I believe it's 18th or 19th or something today. And it is cold now. It's in the 30s, you know, going down in the 20s at night. But it was like... A week ago it was 75 degrees and I was sweating at work and I'm like there is something seriously wrong with this weather patterns we have going on here not that I'm complaining because weather was nice so we were taking advantage of it <clears throat> spending some time outside just doing a lot of messing around with the car so anytime the end of the year comes the end of the season fall is where I spend more time in the hobby room in the 2RC production studio where I'm at right now and this is when I spend most of my time in a room, and I have one task left for this year. One thing on my list that I want to get done, and that is get the Hornet kit, and at least if I don't finish it, get started on that. That was one of my missions. Another thing that I'm doing, which I have to do first, is I'm working on RC Keno 27's lunchbox. Uh, I have work to do on that, some customization and LEDs on it. So I got to do that, and then... The one mission that I wanted to complete was obviously the Hornet, which you see the awesome 30th anniversary 2RC Productions Hornet clock that my buddy Sean B. and his wife Sandra sent me. And there's the card that came with it with their hand-drawn cat, as well as they sent me a Halloween card, and those were also drawn by her. She's an amazing artist. She's actually going to do... Uh, a portrait of a couple of the vehicles that I have and this clock is awesome and I'm showing you this because this is the 30th anniversary of the Hornet which I want to finish the Hornet or at least purchase the Hornet and start on it by the end of the year which I don't have that much time left but getting on to the later portion in the video I'm gonna be mentioning Sean B again so keep that in mind uh, I have two vehicles in front of me it was a request by my buddy Tony from CCXRC. Uh, most of you that are subscribed to my channel and know me probably are subscribed to Tony's channel. Um, he does some incredible stuff. He's broke 5,000. He's probably 6,000 now. His numbers have just been exploding. And I knew from the time he came out, he's just an extremely talented dude. You know, his, his video videography and his the way he films and captures stuff, he does that for a living. And it's just phenomenal. His his video productions are amazing and his channel has just exploded so I want to congratulate him on his uh, success and he's a real cool dude uh, he's also carries the uh, best looking guy in RC uh, two years I believe he's going, going to be going for the third title so that's a pretty impressive uh, feed itself because there's a lot of handsome individuals in the RC community those of you guys know I mean a lot of us should be probably Chippendales or something but you know we just figure we don't want to we don't want to you know put it out there too much and be too boasting on ourselves too much but uh tony carries that title so i mean he he's got two trophies already and a third one on the way probably so anyway um <clears throat> he had requested that i do a comparison on the thunder tracks which is an air hogs product which you know i've done a couple videos on it it is an amphibious track machine which is extremely cool and when i first saw this thing just kind of give you a recap when i first saw this thing excuse my voice here i'm getting over a cold here and every so often my voice starts cracking a little bit but anyway this track machine <clears throat> this track machine when i first saw the colors on it i was a little taken back because i'm like what is going on with this thing with this like pastel looking colors and then i'm reading it and then i saw it was amphibious and i'm like Man, if this thing actually works the way it's supposed to, amphibious vehicles, this thing's going to be incredible. Because I've was, i I've been talking about this for a long time. I was actually talking um, with my buddy Josh from Midlife RC about 
amphibious vehicles, how I was going to probably try to create one on my own. And because I couldn't find one, and I always thought that was cool, and then all of a sudden this thing comes out, I'm like, I got to grab it. So anyway, the reason that I am so, you know, thrilled about this vehicle initially, besides the colors, was because I am a huge fan of the Airhawks Hypertrax. So what I have in front of me here is the Airhawks Hypertrax 2.4 gigahertz track machine. This thing is able to tackle dirt, sand, gravel. Uh, I've even gotten it wet a few times. I've seen other people drive them in the water. You know, and that's I've, I've seen guys waterproof them and submerge them. I've got them, you know, sprayed on a little bit, nothing major. But if you look at how easily you can move back and forth, how slow you can move this thing. And this is what I absolutely love about this thing. And then you can do this, you know, you can go super fast, both ways. It climbs, it jumps. I mean, it's just amazing piece of RC machinery, like I've said. And I got my first Hypertrax, I've had a few of them, and I got my first Hypertrax two years ago almost, and never had an issue with them. I uh, actually had a blue and a orange one, like the Bears color. And I gave that to a buddy of mine for his daughter. And then uh, this actually was Richie's, and then I took it over. Richie used it like one time. I'd probably driven this one maybe, I don't know, four or five times. This one hasn't been driven much. And then Ryan's got a green one. And then I got a couple more that I bought that are sealed up. Um, and the bad thing about it is you cannot get these anymore. They discontinued them. They're absolutely awesome, awesome RCs. And why Airhawks quit making them, I have no idea. I talked to a couple reps. They told me that they were not quitting production. Well, meanwhile, they went away and you couldn't order them and stores cleared them out. And I was like, something's not adding up. They were still on the website. Now, recently, I've went on the website. Airhawks website is no more. Now they're Spin Master, it's spinmaster.com. The Airhawks Hypertrax is no longer on the website, and it's been probably a year at least since they stopped production on these. And now the crazy thing about it is these go f new when they were new. They were $34.95, which was an absolute steal. I mean, the, the fun factor and the durability and what these things could get through and the speed, I mean, it was just a no-brainer. And now they are going anywhere from ninety dollars. I've seen them all the way up to almost three hundred dollars on Amazon and eBay. They are bringing some serious coin, and I think it's finally sinking in that it's such a cool unit, and they're gone. You can't get them anymore. So I'm a huge fan of the Hypertrax. The only difference is I would say between the Hypertrax and the Thundertrax is the size. The Hypertrax is definitely faster. It's more, a little more agile and a little more precise in the controls. I love the controller a lot better than the Thundertrax controller. The Thundertrax controller is definitely a uh, chintzier, lightweight controller, which most toy grade RCs suffer in that category. Where most suffer, the Hypertrax did not suffer. This radio has trim. It has the on-off switch. It has this built-in awesome battery charger that coils up like this i mean it is absolutely phenomenal how this set works you plug it in charges off i mean you tuck it away just ingenious ingenious design i love it the controller itself it's got like a gear for the wheel rubber nice spring action comfortable in the hand i mean it's like a full size it's heavy because it, it carries eight double A's. That's definitely the downside is the eight double A's, but the batteries last a long time, even with charging the unit off of it. It has a built-in LiPo battery. You charge it right off the controller. Like I said, this one has probably been used, I would guess maybe, with my use and Richie's use, maybe 10 runs, if that. This one was unboxed out of the new box, uh, given to Richie. He had it on his shelf for a while, rode it two times. I drove it a few times, and it's basically been sitting here. So every so often, I'll just charge it. I might mess around with it a little bit, but it's basically been sitting. Super cool RC, and I'm very, very disappointed that they went away. So I'm going to hold on to the few I have, just so I have them, because I know I can never get them again. Luckily, I have a few of them.
getting on to the Thunder Tracks. Basically, the same operation as the Hyper Tracks forward, backwards, turning, digital proportional control. Difference is the Hyper Tracks does not go in the water. You know, you don't send it down in a lake and drive around with it, but it does do this. It climbs up a wall, it'll flip and reverse itself and keep on going. That's one of the major, major cool features about it, especially for little kids, because they could drive it and they don't get frustrated. It'll just hit the wall and come back and keep going. It's got a sensor on it that tells it when it flips to reverse the tracks. Very cool. Thunder tracks, amphibious vehicle. Has to be in the water, has a sensor. The thing opens up in the water and you could drive around with it. I think it is like one of the coolest, coolest concepts of any RC that I've ever seen. The runtime is definitely a lot less than I would have hoped, but over time, it has improved a little bit over the charging cycles. Once the battery was charged a few times, it started to get a little better. Um, when you use it in the water and you engage this a few times, it just sucks the battery down. The best luck I had for long battery life was driving it on relatively flat ground, uh, dry land. It lasts quite a while. You might be able to get, you know, 10, 15 minutes out of it. Uh, using it in water and land, I was lucky to get maybe four, five, six, seven minutes out of it. But it is really a cool unit. I'm going to see my GoPro is interfering with the hyper tracks before. I'm going to see if I can get this to run. This has a on-off power switch right here. It has a rubber plug that goes in there for the charge port. Okay, it's on right now. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little idea. It is proportional control. You can see it spins slow. It's definitely not as slow. It goes, you can see I'm giving it gas. I'm gonna go real easy with it. It definitely is not as slow and precise is the hyper tracks but it does crawl you can't go slow with it it climbs over a lot of stuff it runs through the grass absolutely phenomenal with these big paddles for scooping water and you may look at it and you might say why are the paddles in the opposite direction you would think they would go the other way for scooping water but you could see when you go backwards this thing just bounces and bounces around a lot like that when it goes forward it's super smooth and when you're in the water it pushes the water. It pushes the water and it works good. So I cannot engage the feature because it has to be submerged in the water for that to work. But I have two other videos on this. I have an unboxing and I have a sample run video. So if you have not seen it, you could see it go in the water, go on land. And this is just basically an overview. After running this for X amount of batteries, I want to say that I love it way more now than when I first took it out of the store and bought it. I think it's a phenomenal design. It has worked flawlessly so far. I heard a couple people online saying that they used it three times and the motors burn out and all this stuff. I, I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they, it was just a fluke or, you know, you can't have bad units. You can have motors that go out. But I've rid, driven it in the water, in the mud, um, dry land, grass, climbing. And so far, after probably running, I don't know, I would say 12, maybe 10, 12 batteries through it, no issues whatsoever. The controller is definitely kind of weak. It's like a PlayStation controller, but it's real lightweight. It's kind of chintzy, flimsy. Definitely nothing like the Hypertrax radio. The Hypertrax radio is, is absolutely phenomenal, like I said. Um, but it is definitely worth the money. Now, if it's your only RC that you, you've never had an RC and you're going to buy this for your first one, uh, I don't know about that. It's a little pricey. It's up in a $70, $75 range. It's a little pricey. But if it's a second or third RC... Or just the fact that you want an amphibious vehicle, awesome. I cannot wait to bring it up to my in-laws place in Michigan. They're right on the lake. They got a little sand beach there. Some of my other, other videos, you've seen me running RCs around up there. And their setup there is going to be absolutely perfect for this. And I plan on getting run videos up there of this. So just wanted to go over this. 2.4 gigahertz radio controller. Comes with the charger, USB charger. Um, Airhawks Hypertrax charges from the controller this charges from a usb port or a uh, plug adapter uh, very very cool units i'm very sad that the hyper is not going to be around 
but I wanted to show you that and I'm going to kind of go through this year I posted the other day and I want to talk to you guys a little bit because I like to check in every so often and I haven't done this so we are in November like I said middle of November we are on pace to possibly hit 2,000 subs by January 1 we hit a thousand January 1 of 2016 and it would be awesome if we could break 2,000 I want to thank everybody for the support for the subs for the comments for the thumbs up um, I, I you know I didn't know when we started if I'd get any more than five subs 10 subs 20 subs it took me like 14 months to hit a um, hundred subs and then you know we gradually were climbing at a uh, steady pace it's not exploding you know by any means where I look on there and I got 12 more subs every time I look at it that's not the case but we gradually have been gaining subs and support along the way and we are approaching 2000 I think we're at like 1993 or something right now at the time of this video so we're or, yeah 1893 yeah so we're almost at 1,900 subs. That would leave us, if we get 19 by the end of the month, we got one month to hit 100 to get us to 2,000, which would be awesome if we could make that milestone. But I kind of want to show you what we had going this year. I showed you the 30th anniversary clock, which I have to do my Hornet, like I said. But I'm going to go over to the shelves where the vehicles are and kind of go over what went on in 2RC Productions this year as far as builds and new purchase. All right, YouTubers. I want to start over here with my ECX 110 scale Torment brush version. This was the first vehicle that I got of 2016. Uh, the wife bought me that for Christmas. So that was a purchase. That was one that we bought. Uh, shortly thereafter, Ryan bought the 124 scale ECX Torment, which is a pretty cool little truck. Had some issues with it in the beginning with suspension parts got that thing ironed out it's been good since he doesn't use it that much we probably only ran that one maybe eight or ten times and it's kind of been sitting but it is a good unit and it held up to the uh, abuse that we put it through it's been a good unit uh, panning over to the upper shelf I purchased the wheelie king this year as well which was an awesome awesome truck that is the go-to basher truck I love that truck. I recommend anyone that's thinking about buying a Basher. $219, ready to run. Absolutely phenomenal truck. 2.4 gigahertz radio. Comes with the battery. Comes with a charger. The charger's weak. You probably want to upgrade and buy a better charger. But that truck takes a beating and keeps on coming. And it is fun. Waterproof. Uh, solid axle monster truck style. Bouncing. I, those of you who know, I've had videos on this. I took the oil out of the shocks. And that thing just bounces around like a old school 80s monster truck i absolutely love it another purchase i made was at tower hobbies the scratch and dent the dromeda wasteland truck with the nerf darts that shoot out of it which is cool that was a pretty cool purchase uh didn't hold my interest too much not like i'd want to take it and drive it all the time uh not that impressed with the handling of it and the ride characteristics not that impressive very weak suspension um runs good the motor runs extremely hot Comparing it to the 118 scale ECX cars, I would say I like the ECX cars a lot better. But the novelty of it, the cool looking scale Mad Max looking body with the dart shooting from the trigger, very, very cool. Really cool for young kids. They really get a kick out of it. Uh, you can see right there that is RC Kennel 27's lunchbox, which I'm going to be tearing into that very, very soon and lighten that baby up. And I got a couple of custom things that I'm doing on it that he doesn't even know about. Uh, going down here, Grace's Kuma Mod. She got that last year for Christmas. Did a custom paint job on that and some lighting and little Kumi there. We had Willie this year, Willie Adventures. Um, just me. We had Willie out here and had him for quite a few weeks. And uh, that was a really fun time. He was hanging out with Kuma Mod. So Grace, Grace's buggy there, the Kuma Mod DTO2 buggy. A lot of good feedback on that. It was a fun build. I love the way it turned out. Turned out really well. And I also made um, Dicky to travel with Willie. So I took him that came with that kit, customized paint, made him like kind of like a zombie and a protector of Willie. And he's traveling around the world right now. So that was another thing we did. Uh, moving up to the top shelf here, 
probably my most favorite thing of the year was the Blackfoot re-release 2016. Awesome, awesome truck. Could not have one when I was a kid. Fortunately, now I'm able to buy RCs, and I was able to buy it and do a custom build on it with LEDs and put my flare on it. I call it the 2RC Productions Blackfoot Edition. A lot of great feedback on that as well. A lot of great comments. I love that truck. I drive it quite a bit, but I don't take it into the rough stuff. I just basically cruise it, run through the grass, bounce around in the rocks a little bit. Fun truck. Awesome to have in my collection. Very excited about that truck. Also have videos out on that if you have not seen them. By all means, check them out. Going down to the third rack. We uh, purchased the, I believe Josh from Midlife was the one that keyed me in on this one. Uh, Unimog kits, purchased them at the beginning of last year, I want to say, or this year, 2016. Uh, got it really, really cheap. I want to say it was like 80 bucks or something for the kit. They were discontinuing it. So I bought that and modified the heck out of that mog. I modified the body, cut the bed down, lowered it, did a custom paint job on it, added a, a handmade roll bar on it and diesel stack and spare tire and gave it that kind of, you know, I put like shattered glass, I spider webbed the glass and all kinds of beat up rust and just kind of that rat look, Unimog. And uh, it actually was nicknamed the Junkyard Mog. I had a vote on it. Jeff Thorpe won that. So that is the Junkyard Mog. Officially, that is its name. Uh, moving on to the Crawler King. That was Ryan's truck that he got for Christmas last year. Another exceptional HPI product. Fantastic truck. I would buy it again tomorrow. Crawls awesome. It's just a beast. I mean, it's stock form. The only thing I had to do was modify the suspension a little bit, but that truck is just awesome. We've taken it on numerous crawling excursions, Ryan and myself. Just an awesome truck. I mean, the tires are just humongous and soft and grippy, and the suspension, it's just things that my SEX 10 would struggle or not even be able to tackle. This thing just goes over it like nothing. Really cool truck. Ford Raptor body. Awesome truck. I believe that was $289 that goes for it. Definitely worth the money. HPI, I give I give them two big thumbs up for this platform. For this, it's the same platform as the Wheelie King. Just an awesome truck. So, uh, moving up, there is the Hornet. That is my original Hornet from 1986. Um, I built it, or I actually did this body in January of 1987, and that's why I picked the 87 stickers. I am buying another Hornet kit and I am going to take all the parts off out of the new kit to replace what needs to be fixed on this because this has got some problems. And I'm going to keep all the standard radio gear, the speed control, mechanical speed controller. I'm going to use my original Futaba attack R still. And I'm going to redo the body exactly like this, just basic yellow. I'm going to place the stickers in the same locations just like I did when I was a kid. These wheels here were made, uh, my dad got them made at work where he worked he made these or i believe a buddy of his i think was a tool and die guy that made them for him he got them for me and they did not make aluminum wheels back then uh they might have made these chrome like chrome plated cheap plastic ones these are true aluminum wheels a one-off that was fabricated one-off for me for this car back in 1987-88 and they're dirty i'm going to polish them up and put them back on the hornet that i do so pretty excited about that moving up here we got the grasshopper re-release I bought this car just because another one I always wanted when I was a kid I always loved the look of it more so than the Hornet I love this body it just looks awesome and when I got it I wanted to do something special to the body and this just morphed into a something I've never done I basically painted every part on it the bumper the sidebars the chassis the three-piece wheels uh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six colors on this thing. Painted the gearbox. Uh, the only thing I have left to do on it is the LEDs, but that won't be till probably sometime after the first of the year when I finish the Hornet and finish Ken's uh, lunchbox. I'll get back to this and do the LEDs. But a lot of great feedback on this. I love the way it turned out. I love having vehicles like this. This is a show vehicle for me. It's a shelf queen. I'll putz around with it a little bit, but it's going to stay like that. I love to look at it on the shelf. It's a piece of Tamiya history. 
Luckily, Tamai is releasing these cars, so we're able to buy them again and have it. And I have it, and I love it. Another discovery this year was the iconic ET4 radio. Bought two of them. Bought one for Grace. Uh, Kumaman, I bought one for the Grasshopper. Josh from Midlife RC, he bought a couple of these too for his kids' cars. Or I believe, no, he might be using it. I'm not sure who's using it, if his son's using it or he's using it. But fantastic radio. That was another discovery. That is a Hobby Town USA exclusive product. Uh, we had a couple, uh, we had the short, short course storm crusher, which was a toy grade toys R us unit that I picked up. Um, that's a fun little truck. It's an entry level more for more so for kids, but very durable. Um, we got a little bit of product sponsorship this year. Uh, actually it was RC noob, Tim glue from RC noob had dropped my name to new bright. He's sponsored by them. And they had sent me a couple test units out here. One is the RC Warrior, and the other one is the RC Track Attack. And both vehicles are really cool in their own right. They both work really good. You can see this one is pretty dirty, and you know I've been I was, <laughs> I, was I ran the heck out of that thing through grass and jumping and water and everything, and it's just taking the abuse and kept kept coming. But I really got to say that I am really impressed with the RC Warrior. This thing can take a beating like no other RC that I think, I, especially in this class. I mean, as much abuse as you could give it, it, it just kept coming back. I mean, I smashed it, and we went downstairs and run into things and jumped it and got it wet, and nothing phased this unit. So that was pretty cool. A couple, little product sponsorship from New Bright, so I want to thank them for sending those out this year and letting us test them. That was cool. Ah, uh, boy, I think, oh, we even bought a couple, or actually, we bought a React, React 9 Pro Boat, which was a pretty cool boat, uh, started, that was later in the year I bought that, that's fun, I like the boats too, that was really the only boat that we purchased this year, I think, was this one, and it was fun, we did a little bit of boating, not too much this year, uh, another purchase we made back over here was the Dramada Kodo HD, uh, full HD camera, drone, quadcopter, $59.99, so it's an entry, you know, not entry level, but it's lower end of the scale price-wise. No complaints with that thing whatsoever. I mean, I had it out a bunch of times overhead, little breezes, and it flies great. The camera footage turned out awesome, so that was another purchase. Uh, I believe that's probably it for this year, projects that we had. and Might have been a few other little miscellaneous repairs, but I think that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to get on to the next phase of this video in the last portion. All right, YouTubers. So I was talking about this Airhawks Hypertrax. And I am going to have a giveaway at 2,000 subs. I'm going to be having a giveaway. Um, but I am also I'm having another giveaway. And this giveaway is not going to be in the lottery where it goes and I pick a number and I have people enter in it. It's not going to be that way. This giveaway is... A giveaway that I'm doing because I want to give recognition to a certain subscriber and a friend of mine. And I talked about Sean B, the guy that gave me this clock. And in the last, I want to say, I've been doing this almost three years, so it's got to be at least a couple years that Sean B has been following the channel. And he started watching my videos. He said he just... Love watching the videos and the information, and he, he liked the honesty that I was putting out there, and I pride myself in that, and being honest, giving you guys the straight stuff. Uh, there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities out there if you chase it down, or people offer you stuff, and a lot of times when you get sponsorship and they give you something, that's their way of saying, hey, you know, I kind of own a piece of you now, and you got to say, everything great about whatever I give you. And I'm not that way. Even when New Bright was sending me those products, I told them, I said, you could send me the products. I'd love to review the products. I like New Bright stuff. I've had it for, since I was a kid. But I will not, will not tell anything other than the truth the way I see it. So having said that, Sean B carries, as of right now, my number one subscriber title. He comments on, since he found my channel, he comments on every one of my videos, every Google Plus post that I have. And since that time, we have become close friends as well. Now, he lives in the UK. I live in the United States. 
we've never talked on the telephone, but we've sent stuff, you know, back and forth in the mail. We've talked on Google Plus numerous times, private message. And this guy is not only, um, you know, been my number one subscriber and supporter in the channel, but he's also a close friend of mine. And he's helped me in different situations. And I'd like to think that I, I help him out in the same way. We just became really, really good friends. And he has bought a Mustang this year, which in the UK, Mustangs are extremely rare. You know, I'm a big Mustang guy and big car guy in general. But I love Fords. I love Mustangs. I love Mopars too. But uh, Mustangs are probably my favorite. And I dabble in Mustangs. You know, those of you that follow the channel know that I buy and sell them. We do work to them and sell them and buy new ones. And I've had quite a few throughout the years. And Sean B. has always liked Mustangs. He's liked American muscle cars. In the UK, they are extremely rare. So he ended up landing a 2007 uh, Mustang. And it's a V6 model, 5-speed. Beautiful car. When he sent me the pictures of it, it's got all the GT stripes on it. And the scoop. and I mean, dual exhaust. It's got cold air intake on it. It is when he showed me the pictures of it and said he was contemplating buying this, and the, you know he's he's not a wealthy man. I'm not a wealthy man. I could buy a car. You know, if I buy a car, it's a big deal to me. It's not like I can afford to buy, you know, 15 pristine muscle cars and buy endless stuff. I have a small budget that I use weekly that I can use towards RC stuff or car stuff or whatever. And when it's gone, it's gone. The rest of my money is used for, you know, savings and a family and whatever else is needed. So. For him, it was a big purchase, and he had asked my advice on it, what I thought, and he ended up buying this car, and it's absolutely phenomenal. And the excitement in Sean B's reaction to this car, and the way he was describing to me when we were talking back and forth, and I mean, I was just ecstatic for the guy. Um, I know what it's like to have a car or get a car that you uh, may think, you know, you might think it's totally out of reach, and you could never ever get something you know, in your lifetime, and when you land something like that, and now a 2000 Mustang here in the States, you see them all the time, but a 2007 Mustang set up the way his is in the UK is extremely rare. He says when he goes out, it's like people are stopping them, and they're, oh, man, look, oh, man, that car's great. Can I see it? Oh, where'd you get it? I mean, it's a big, big, huge deal in the UK. So having said all that, I have a couple of items here that I'm going to be sending out to Sean, who has my number one subtitle and is going to get a little special package. Now, this is a side of the 2000 sub giveaway. This is just something that I'm doing for Sean B because I want him to know that I appreciate his friendship. I appreciate his support. Uh, going back to this clock, this is one of the coolest things anybody has ever given me in my life. I mean, it's just awesome commemorating the 30th anniversary since the first time that I bought an RC car, which got me to this point, obviously. So I have a few items here. First item that is going to Sean B. is a Pez Dispenser Iron Man. This was the thing. Sean B.'s Mustang is gold and red. And it's been since nicknamed Red. But he had said when he bought the car that people were saying it's the Iron Man car because it's these colors. Well, RC Kennel 27 had picked this up. And asked me if I would send it to him as a gift with the things that I'm sending him. And it's pretty cool because it says candy. It's got American flag made in the USA. Pez dispenser. It's Iron Man. He can put it away as a keepsake. Uh, goes with this car. So that's the first item. The second item I'm sending Sean B. Is a limited edition 2014 celebrating 50 years of Mustang history. The National Mustang Racers Association, which is here in the States, obviously. Ford National Series, 50 years. I got this at a car show uh, that I had one of my cars in. I actually won a, a best of class, a first place trophy with that car at the time, which was a 98 Cobra Mustang. And this was given to me at that show. The only vehicle that this car hit, or this plate was on was Richie's 2000 Mustang GT that we picked up from this year this was on his car on the front till his plates came in so i think it would be fitting to give it to sean because it's just an awesome you know mustang license plate with the 50 years on it and you know the nmra which is united states 
And I'd have to say that probably nobody in the UK is going to have this plate. So I am sending this to Sean uh, just as a token of my appreciation and my excitement for his new Mustang. That is going there. The next thing is just the uh, Ford keychain from a local Ford dealer out my way. So it has the designation on the other side where it's from and so on. So I'm sending him a Ford keychain for his Mustang, red. Uh, I'm sending him a couple decals. Really no big deal. These are just some old classic automotive decals. But they say on the bottom, these are old. These are probably from the 70s. Uh, printed in the USA. Gabriel Shocks printed in the USA on the bottom. So I'm going to send him a couple of those for his garage or wherever he wants to put them. I'm also sending, sending him some decals from Summit Racing Equipment, which is a huge company out here. Summit's been around since I was a kid in high school. Buying parts from my, my original first car, my 1971 uh, satellite that I had. Uh, I used to order from Summit. I ordered my headers from Summit. I ordered my carburetor from Summit. And I'm going to send him some of these stickers. It has the American flag in the back, Summit Racing Equipment. So he can do whatever he needs. If he doesn't want to use them, he can just hold on to it. thought that was pretty cool. And then I'm sending him uh, my Extreme Mustang Milestones Collector's Edition magazine this is from 2006 the year end 2006 and i thought it fitting because this was the end of 2006 2007 is his car in this book they're very hyped up on this style um when they changed the style in 2005 because it was so new at this time it was a year old the car on the cover is a 2006 shelby it says here the other new shelby and it's a v6 powered shelby and there's a couple of v6 mustangs in here that are showcased and i thought this would be a cool piece of classic history for sean to have i've bought this new and i've kept it ever since it's a special magazine but i want to pass it on to sean it has a bunch of cars in there but the other thing that i noticed when i was thumbing through it the other day that i didn't realize is if I could find it relatively quick. If you go to this page, it's showing XM Tech Caster Master. They're talking about adjuster, adjustable camber plates to improve handling. What is the car? It's a Dark Highland Green 2001 Bullet Mustang GT on there. So I thought that was really cool. So I'm going to send this magazine to Sean B. You can see on the bottom there it says 2006. Just happened to notice that it has a 2001 Bullet Mustang in there, Sean. So that's pretty cool. And on this page, you can see my other favorite Mustang of all time, probably, is the 0304 Mustang Mach 1. Absolutely love that car. That is probably my favorite Mustang right there. So I'm going to send this magazine with him. It's a collector's item for him to hold on to. And then last but not least, Sean B., I am sending you my personal Air Hogs Hypertrax. Now, it's not sealed in the box. But it's the color combination that you got to have. And it is the red, black, and gold to match red. They do not make these anymore, like I said. They're claiming ridiculous amounts of money for them. But I want you to have this Hypertrax. I'm going to send this to you. It works perfect. You saw me running it. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to take the batteries out of the radio, obviously. and not transporting the batteries in there. But you'll have to put some double A's in there. But it works flawless. And the fact that this this Air Hogs Hypertrax is your colors of red also seem fitting that you get it. And it, because it is probably one of my favorite RCs of all time, I want you to have it, Sean B. Um, thanks for being my number one sub and supporter and friend within the hobby, buddy, and, with, and outside the hobby. You know we've talked a lot. We've helped each other out in our normal lives aside of RC. So... You've been a great friend to me, and I want to send you some cool stuff. So within the next week or so, I'm going to be boxing this up and sending this out to Sean B. So sorry for the long. All right, YouTubers, I got cut off there. My card was full, so we'll edit this up a little bit. But sending this Hypertrax out to Sean B. Hope you enjoy it, buddy. I'm going to be sending this with the other stuff within the next week or so. I want to thank you again for the support. I want to thank everybody else for the support. For the comments, the thumbs up, the subs. It means a lot to us here at 2RC Productions. Hoping to break 2,000 subs. 
by January 1. Tell your friends. Tell everyone about it. Family-friendly fr operation. We have build videos, reviews, custom custom builds, you know, repairs, unboxings. You name it, we do it. We also dabble in cars. We do some car stuff as well, but we're primarily an RC channel. So I want to thank everybody again for watching. And uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving because this video will probably be posting a day or so before Thanksgiving. So I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully everybody uh, gets together with their families and doesn't have to work and takes advantage of the family time and enjoying life and giving thanks for the blessings that we have. So uh, God bless everybody. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Rich out.